Okay, welcome back to 160th playthrough of Second Battle of Winchester using Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah. Great Battles, the American Civil War series. Uh, it's the expansion pack for it uh, from GMT. And this is the uh, first scenario here, kind of the meeting engagement of, um, of the uh, Union Confederate forces for uh, Second Winchester. So we're up to turn 1200, 12 noon, and uh, just wanted to give you an update on where everybody is and what the strategies are so far. So as I said all along, this is going to be a meeting engagement, and it's a rather large meeting engagement as I'm, as I'm finding out here uh, with everything. So uh, it's quite interesting because I think we're going to have a little bit of combat, but a lot more maneuvering um, to get where we need to go. Uh, as I told you, the intro is only seven turns. We're already uh, two turns in already and uh, still you know, moving along. And we've got a long way to go for the Confederates. Union is in a pretty good position, blocking position to start, but uh, we'll see how that holds up um, in the current turn and uh, future turns going forward. So let me just give a recap of where we are with everything. So first off, let me zoom you in to the AMs and how they set up for this turn. Uh, first off, Union won the initiative and uh, their Union efficiency was two and while the Confederates was also two. So those were the efficiencies for the turn. Um, so Milroy had two but he does have a modifier with a plus one to so give him three and um, Johnson who is the only one on the board so far has no modifiers so we stayed at two so that was the layout for the AMs uh, Milroy obviously with the initiative took the first uh, first draw and then quite the opposite of the last turn wound up with both his AM chits next followed by Johnson's so we've had kind of this both back and forth where it's the, the chits have have um, heavily gone either direction, either beginning or ending for both sides at this point. So what does that mean to uh, to the action that we have here? Well, let's jump back to the other side here and show you kind of the big picture of where everything is right now. So Milroy started, he was in a generally good position. It's where I wanted him to be in kind of blocking positions on the roads here, here, and over in here. Uh, we do have some blocking over on this road here, but they're, they're a little weak over here. That's the weakest point, so that's going to be the interesting battle um, over here. The stronger point, obviously, is to the, uh, to the Union left. Um, slowly diminishing towards the center and then to the right. So we'll see how this holds up. Milroy himself is in command over here of Ely, and most of these units were in command, although they did not move. Um, Elliot was out of command over here with his infantry and cavalry support over here, and these cavalry units were out of command here as well. But at this point, it really didn't matter um, because they could they had three AMs. They could easily let one go um, without really too much of an effect. A little bit of repositioning over here in the center uh, by Elliot. Elliot moved back some of the 120, uh, 23rd Ohio, form a line behind the town, um, taking it, trying to take advantage of the stone walls over here and some of the confusion that the, the town may have with um, Confederates moving up over here. Cavalry moved forward to act as speed bumps uh, because you remember, cavalry, as soon as something moves, enemy moves into three hexes, can now retreat with a UDD. So that provides a break because these guys are going to be coming in 
with at least advanced movement so they're not going to be able to get close so it's going to slow them down a little bit they won't necessarily be able to move their full uh, six nine seven points depending upon the unit type uh, so that is a help so they had moved up over here they originally moved up over to here but Herbert came in and um, as soon as they get close they backed off UDD and they were okay um, so Herbert was able to come in do his six and then do another six to get up here um, so he did get to move his full movement points but these guys did retire uh, so they didn't face the artillery because Herbert has his artillery down here that he was going to open up with on them going forward here so using cavalry as a screen over here also using cavalry as a screen over here these guys were actually up here and over here and as they got close they retreated and they retreated this guy UDD did okay this guy actually UDD didn't fail so he's flipped over to his um, his disordered side over there so we're gonna have to keep watch on him because uh, next time he's gonna start losing points um, as he goes along here so we'll see if we can't get him in good order at some point during the next turn as for the rest of the Union line pretty much stayed um, where they were uh, a little bit of movement over here to the left we advanced the 110th Ohio from the toll booth position up a little bit um, along the road uh, try to get them in a little bit of a secondary blocking position as these guys kind of move back and give ground uh, also moved up the other uh, another squadron of the 13th PA to help cover this road down here but generally everything else stayed the same for uh, for the Union now on the Confederate side as I said before we had Herbert come up over here look to deploy to push back these cavalries they retreated all looked good over there and then the big thing is for the Confederates is over here to the Confederate right where we had Walker come up the old Front Royal Road deploy to push back this cavalry they'll look to push push again beyond and hopefully get into contact with these guys and try to overrun them as quick as possible because they're getting points um, which I don't know if I mentioned in the prior videos they're getting points each turn for these three hexes this this and this so um, they're gonna try to push them off as quick as possible more of Johnson's troops have come up over here Williams and Jones um, have moved up their units over here um, again only 2 a.m. so they couldn't really move that much cavalry is shifted over onto the front royal road uh, just as a blocking um, but these guys will probably deploy as quickly as possible to try to push them out Jones may take a detour and reinforce this way up the front royal road because there's less units over here and I think once this falls and this avenue becomes open to the Confederates going up this way sorry you're off camera there a little bit but going up to the northwest um, that'll loosen up Ely to the east and he'll have to fall back there as well same thing may happen with Kernstown here as well we've got Herbert coming up over here but on the next turn we're gonna get early coming in here and coming up the Valley Pike and we're also going to get Gordon coming in um, over on this side uh, I should swing you over over on this side coming up the middle road right here um, this way so that will kind of loosen things up here a little bit I think as time goes on so no real appreciable casualties um, at this moment just one disordered unit um, as I said I think this is going to be a lot more maneuvering and a few you know quick pointed battles over here um, but we'll see how it goes so that's the summary for the uh, the 12 p.m. turn we'll be moving on to the 1 p.m. turn and seeing what happens there thanks for watching
Welcome back to 160th playthrough of the Battle of Winchester using Death Valley uh, Battles for Shenandoah and using the expansion here for Second Winchester. So we finished the 12 p.m. turn, 1200 turn, and um, wanted to bring you back, show you what's happened here with the battle. It is actually heated up a little bit. Um, the units have engaged and we have some casualties and some some pressure on the Union line um, from all uh, uh, avenues of attack by the Confederates. So uh, to get started here let me just show you from the beginning here what the AMs look like. There's quite a few of them here. We did have early come on so we do have um, uh, we do have early's AMs now coming into the play. So to start off with the initiative won by the Confederates. <coughs> so Johnson uh, became the first AM to, to go out. But before that, the efficiencies three for the Confederate, two for the Union. Now uh, with that um, the Union went to three because Milroy has an added one for um, for him. And we had um, Johnson at three because there's no modifier for him. And then we also had Early who's now on board who has a modifier of two um, for that. Bring Early over. There's a modifier of two. Um, you know, uh, excuse me, a modifier of one for that, not two. What am I thinking? Uh, that's his uh, coordination. So he has a modifier of one, which three plus one is four. Um, anyways, so Early is going to get four, Johnson's going to get three, Milroy is going to get three um, on here as well. So this is the order that it occurred. So Johnson went first, followed by an Early and Johnson so there was a good amount of movement by the Confederates to get on the board or get reinforcements onto the board the first half of the turn we'll see that when I show you the whole whole thing a little bit uh, then we had two Milroy's which they could respond to the movement uh, which they did a little bit with the cavalry and some of the infantry which we'll see then followed by uh, the rest of the or two more of the earlies uh, which was interesting because they were able to force into uh, Kernstown, which we'll see. Followed by a march. Now the march uh, here, shift you down here a little bit. There we go. Now the march was used by Gordon's infantry to move up so that they didn't occur any uh, fatigue um, as they're coming in. I'll show you what happened with that. Followed by early Milroy and Johnson to round out the, the turn. So those are the AMs um, that occurred for this turn. Now, how does that play out in the bigger picture of things? So let's take a look at the big camera. So here we are, and let's start with Johnson's units up here. You can see action has shifted up a little bit um, from the prior uh, prior turn as Jackson's uh, excuse me as Ewell's units have advanced up um, both the old and the new front royal roads so with that we had Walker who's now positioned right here advance up and challenge the cavalry that was screening out in front. If you remember from the last video, we had the cavalry screening out in front. Those cavalry units are now here, and the other one is this one that's now collapsed and retreating back to the north, back to Winchester. So Walker challenged them. They retreated, um, or withdrew, as part of their special cavalry withdrawals a couple of times. Um, one time we had another failure uh, failure of UDD by this unit. 
but then there was some actual shooting by some of Walker's units over in this general area where Walker was able to actually score a hit on them as well. And that, that collapsed them and sent them basically running, um, running off from there. The other unit over here, uh, again, kept retreating, uh, but then got into a little bit of firefight with the 4th Virginia over here, which both disrupted each other. We got some high, nice high rolls from both sides, and they disrupted each other, and consequently the cavalry fell back uh, over here. So we had a little bit of back and forth, uh, kind of end running each other, or the, I should say the Confederates, and running the Union, and the Union falling back um, with the cavalry just because they, they could, and kind of uh, slowing them down or trying to slow them down. Because really, Walker hasn't, Walker ended up roughly about here last turn, and they're only here. So they had uh, basically three activations, well, actually two, because they didn't move the last. Um, Last activation just to save, save, um, save uh, fatigue. So they've been able to move up around here, but again, they haven't been able to move as far as they would have liked, which would be in, up into here, because they now have to take on the um, 87th Pennsylvania Regiment that's over here as well. But I don't think they'll they'll stand long. You can see they're about to be flanked um, over here. So depending upon the AM for the for the 1 p.m. turn. That will uh, dictate how this is going to uh, how this is going to play out. But then you have a long stream of reinforcements coming in here with Jones, who came up the road here as well, as well as the artillery uh, moving up here uh, as well. Williams, on the other hand, over here, and let me just let me actually zoom you in on Williams here because that was a little bit of a little bit of a firefight over there as well. And we're going to shift you over this way. There we go. So got into a little bit of a firefight. He came out of, came down the old Fort Royal Road, came out of the woods here, and got into a little bit of a firefight with this unit here. You can see he's, he is disordered, and he actually lost a strength point. The top unit lost a strength point and was disordered um, prior turn. They were subsequently recovered with their last AM. But you can see they're kind of bottled up over here, and there's two regiments, this regiment here, this regiment here, the uh, 18th Connecticut, um, and the 5th Maryland kind of holding that out. But again, I think they're going to have to kind of fall back uh, eventually here with the weight of what's coming down the old Front Royal Road. Um, it's going to require them to push back and provide some sort of defense up here for these guys. But that's what Milroy, I had planned for Milroy anyways, a defense kind of slowly rolling back as much as possible, giving giving ground slowly to um, to kind of run out the clock uh, for the Confederates to get up here and get points. Because the, the Union has accumulated points with occupying here, here, and here for, uh, this will be now two turns, um, they occupied at the 11 o'clock turn, and now at the um, 12 o'clock turn. So they will, um, you know, they'll get six victory points uh, for that. So that'll put the Confederates into a position that they'll need to um, need to accumulate some points there as well. Okay, so that's that's what's happened over here on the uh, uh, the Union left, Confederate right. In the center, uh, if I swing you back this way, here we go, the center, and I'll let's see if I can back you down here a little bit so you can see, there we go. So in the center, we had Herbert come up, and again, a little bit of skirmishing with the cavalry. Again, two cavalry units, this unit here and this unit here, were positioned up on this ridge over here. Herbert pushed forward. Cavalry retreated. Um, there was one failure over here, and then subsequent artillery shot, which um, knocked this unit down. And you can see they're on the verge of, um, of collapse, too, so they may fall back as well. This unit over here uh, was able to retreat pretty well um, and was able to survive. The infantry is now in position to um, take up the 
pick up the defense. Herbert, Herbert's units have entered the town, or his infantry unit has entered the town, 2nd so Maryland, over here. Cavalry providing screen, artillery back here on, on the hill. Early uh, in advance mode, again moving up the Valley Pike in support of Herbert's advance on Kernstown. So they've been able to move up fairly regularly. They did six, six, and then they also did one more activation. Actually, this whole group did one more activation. Both of them are now fatigue zero, um, and Hayes should be fatigue zero there as well. So they accumulated a little bit of fatigue because I wanted to get them into Kernstown on this turn, which which they've accomplished. Um, that means that they have this. They'll have this as a staging point. Hopefully, they can push through here. Excuse me. The next turn, or at least push these uh, this regiment back and continue up the Valley Pike over here. Now they will have uh, just off screen um, here, which I'll show you in a minute. There's another Union uh, regiment, the 110th Ohio, uh, taking up a blocking position just off screen, and they should be. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. No, it's still off screen if I move up here. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll show that in a little bit. So uh, that's what the center looks like. So there's a real threat coming up the center, the threat on the Confederate, um, th threat on the Union left, Confederate right. Let's bring us back out over here. There we go. So we have two threats over here, but even a bigger looming threat is if we shift over to our left a little bit. I straighten you out. Oop. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so now we have this situation we're coming up the middle road right here. We have Gordon, and this is what I was talking about before. Gordon is in march mode. Now he went into march mode um, mainly to come up here, uh, to get up here in three activations without incurring fatigue. He could do that because he's going to be well short of the visibil visibility of this unit up here. One, two, three, four. Also, to this unit's in advance, uh, it's cavalry unit that's in advanced orders, and he's actually out of command, so he can't change his orders directly. He's out of the command from his uh, brigadier, which is Elliot, who's over here. So he is really no threat other than being a roadblock uh, from them. So they could actually move up over here. There's another cavalry back here coming up to, to join him to, to roadblock as well. But now he's moved up to here. Now, next turn, of course, Gordon's going to be out of command, so he's going to have to try to shift his command, uh, shift his orders uh, directly. Now, Gordon is a very high-quality leader. He has a plus three on his shift, so I have no problem that he will be able to shift and get into at least advanced mode to kind of bump this 12th Cavalry uh, detachment um, back or, or threaten him, and they'll they'll move back that way. Um, that shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem for them to get around over there. And again, drive up the road because beyond this, beyond these two cavalry units, there is absolutely nothing. Um, this all comes forward, or, or all comes to a head back here at the toll house in the general vicinity of the toll toll booth and the stone house on the valley turnpike so if he can brush these aside or at least push them back he can make a good push up here oh probably in two turns to you know be in this general vicinity and in good striking distance to take um, the toll house um, which actually gets one point my marker has disappeared over there, uh, but uh, you'll be able to get the one point over here as well as potentially push back cavalry and threaten to cut off the center and really collapse the Union defense where they'll have to come back to this wood, li wood line. Let's shift you back here, but this wood line for, uh, for a defense because the Confederates are looking for 
hexes here and here for victory conditions as well as um, other points. And they're going to need them. They're going to need all they can get because uh, you know Union has a lot of victory points. And it's really key at this point that the Confederates capture Pritchard's Hill and the two road uh, victory hexes for the Confederates to knock out the Union um, victory points that they'll be they'll accumulate um, on each turn. So that's a little bit about where we are. Um, mostly just skirmishing right now. A few casualties. Uh, we took two strength points in uh, on the 12th PA, um, and then we head up here. Oh, come on. We had three strength points, so five strength points lost for the uh, for the Union and cavalry. So that could be dangerous down the road. We had one strength point lost um, over on the Confederate left, way over here. If I can get you in frame, there we go, right over here. Um, so a bit of casualties, uh, you know, coming coming on board now, which is about what you would expect with a meeting engagement. A bit of skirmishing, a bit of a uh, bit of chaos for those frontline units um, when they get started, but plenty of reserves coming in to uh, to threaten and um, you know push beyond. So that is pretty much the end of um, turn uh, 12 p.m. turn. So we'll move on to the 1 p.m. 1300 turn and see what can happen. As I said, the next step is. Again, big pushes by uh, Johnson and Early and Gordon up the roads, and then we'll see how Milroy can respond, trying to keep a uh, keep a defense together over this rather rather large um, area uh, that he's defending. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully, you're enjoying this uh, 160th playthrough, Second Winchester, and we'll see you uh, on the next video.